and welcome back to the MHL podcast. I'm Alice. And I'm Andy. And I've been doing a little bit of reading for this week's podcast. Oh, yeah. and, okay. and a common theme that I've seen in a couple of blogs and, and articles from businesses is the topic of learning systems and what they are. Okay. We've talked about it a bit, haven't we, on the podcast? Because, I mean, it's, it's something that we talk about HR, we talk about payroll, we talk about finance, and learning is a big part of that. And we, we've always talked about learning, you know, sometimes being part of the HR thing, but we've recognised more and more in the last couple of years that learning is very much its own thing and it should be appreciated in its own right and how it complements an employee experience, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I know there's lots of avenues to look at it, you know, different platforms of different needs and different approaches, and we've had experts on about that. But what have you been reading about then this week? So what I've kind of found is when we talk about learning systems, like he's kind of said, everyone's got a different version of what that means to them. So what it means to their business, what it means to their employees. Um, obviously, we speak about the systems, but mm. we know there's different resources in a system. We can talk about media-based, we can talk about written. Okay. Um, I'm sure people still have um, externals that come into the business uh, to train p uh, their teams up. Um, but one thing that I think is quite a hot topic is actually getting the val most value out of your learning system. Okay. Um, so kind of looking at um, what would be the first instance is the content. So yeah. what's actually being delivered from those le learning systems? Okay. I suppose, there's, like you said, there's, you've already kind of touched on it, but there's so many different ways you can engage with learning content and so many different mediums that that could yeah. take, right? And I suppose it's on the need of the business. Um, some businesses may be very compliant heavy or training heavy because they need their staff to be certified to a certain level to perform their roles. So in that instance, a learning software is vital because Definitely. it's about driving the workforce and the skills that gives your business the integrity to, to work with the people that it works with. For some people, or some organizations, the learning might be that actually, well, we, we usually mean it for people's development. Yeah. And we do it for like progression. And we, or we, or we, um, but in, in most instances, you've got a, these are the skills you need, so let's train them up. But also this is what the business requires as a fundamental level. That's yeah. when you get into like your equality and diversity training. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a must across the whole organization. Um I've had experience where it's been video led. So yeah. you know, you sit down and you watch a video, but sometimes that's not that engaging because you're just watching it and people like to skip to the end. Yes. I've had it where it's like polls and quizzes, you have to fill in a quiz to prove that you understand the logic. Yeah, they're quite good actually, aren't they? Because yeah. it gets you thinking on the spot or using what you've learned just there yeah. and then. I've had it where you've just had to read something. I don't think that works very well for me personally. Oh, we all skim read, yeah. don't we, on those? We're all different types of learners as yeah. well, right? Uh, and then I've had in lots of impersonal, internal development and training, which I find really valuable as well. But how do you quantify that? I suppose a good learning platform, whatever you choose, yeah. needs to make sure it's recording this learning and feeding back and showing how people engage with it. And I suppose different media that you choose supports that in different ways, right? Yeah, definitely. And I think on that point as well, um, some businesses will be large enough where they have their own learning and development teams. Yeah. Um, so they have that focus. Um, but I'm probably speaking for the majority, they probably have integrated it as part of their HR department. Yeah. Um, so again, it's looking at where that responsibility is uh, yeah. to be driving the learning development across the business. We've talked about that before, haven't we? We've talked about like LMS, we've talked about LXP, and there's different approaches for different needs in different businesses. And yeah. regardless of what type of approach you are, if you want to employee -led or you want it to be a HR driven led piece the point is that it's accessible and it's there and it's relevant to the business and you feel like you can you yourself can learn from what your employees are engaging with yeah for as to how you can help develop in your development in your workforce definitely so on that point of kind of looking at what would be su what is most suitable what's mm. the most valuable um, that you're speaking about there so one of the kind of subjects that kept came up Kept coming up is um, how do you feed the endless need for new content because we, we spoke about there's mandatory yeah. training and then there's training that's um, specific to different departments or job roles um, but at the end of the day content um, is a lot of it's quite time consuming to create in the first place but mm. there's going to be that constant need for new content every yeah. year yeah. Um, so th it's that question of how do you feed the endless need for new content how do you keep up with it all and now I suppose that you are going to have those kind of hero things that will always repeat every year, but you need to keep them relevant. That's a job in itself. I suppose a lot of people would look to use a learning platform where they outsource that knowledge into the business. Because otherwise, if you're using internal knowledge or internal resource to train or d for development, yeah, that's great, but it's very resource and people heavy, yeah. right? And then you also have to ask yourself the question of how much knowledge do we have in the business that we can use before we start siloing ourselves? So I suppose a good learning platform 
is about being able to bring learnings and new ways of working into the organisation. You're buying that in, I suppose. Definitely. And, there's, and there is value in that as well. Um, I can speak from um, a sales perspective. Um, I didn't realise, but there's actually many different versions of ways to train um, in sales. Um, I can't remember any of the methodologies um, off the top of my head. Um, but I think it's something in the past five years, there's been four different iterations. Or uh, It was mentioned yeah. to me and I thought it just goes to show that you can learn one methodology. Yeah but you need to have almost that refresh, don't you? You need to have someone external come in and say, actually, yeah. we've developed this methodology. Yeah. Try this instead. Um, but it definitely is probably one of the key challenges with okay. um, develop um, developing a learning system or yeah. at least delivering learning and development. And I suppose once you've got your content and you figure out where you're getting it from or how you're sourcing that, you've got to figure out who looks after it in the business. You've got to figure out how you learn from that content. And then you've got to figure out how you can upskill the workforce based on that, what, what, you know, how you do that. So, again, it goes back to the point, right? Yeah. So, learning's great. We know we need something with learning. But if you're going to get value from a learning system, you need to know, one, what content are you looking for? Is that internally sourced? Is that externally sourced? Two, how do you then maintain that? What resource are you going to apply within the business? Are you going to have a dedicated learning and development team? Is it part of the HR function? Or are you going to get trying employees to build process to do it? can be quite laborious. To, uh, three, then you need to go, okay, what topics do we need in the business that we can learn from? And then four, okay, how do we actually record engagement with learning so yeah. we can figure out how the employee force are developing or what our skills gaps are? Yes, and um, that's quite a key one as well because um, within uh, HR software, um, we speak about kind of the skills gap or where people can transfer to different jobs depending on what skills they've developed in the time with the business so um it's really key to be picking up on that data that you can collect from the yeah. programs that you're running um, and the different courses but the question is how do you do it and how do you do it where it's not someone manually inputting it that's something yeah. you want to avoid isn't it it can be really laborious right oh definitely because that's the thing so i i've got like i love an in-person training session and i love meeting like trainers and learning from them and going okay how can i take this into my work and i think going out of the office or going to a room where you do that is really valuable puts you in a better headspace yeah but how does that how can you do that in a way that helps the organization log or track that like the digital learning is so much easier to record the analytics of whereas in yeah. person i feel like you could have a better experience but it's really hard to feed that back into the organization you need a, you need a platform that can log that yeah, definitely. I think it's a good it's a good question to pose, really, because um, again, it really shows the difference of how you can deliver mm -hmm. learning. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not just delivering it, but you need something that comes back. You need your mm -hmm. investment to come back, don't you? Um, but at the end of the day, I think what it comes down to is getting those expertise in. Um, and I had an excellent. Um, delivery from Laughology actually it was an external supplier mm. um, and it gave a dis different perspective on yeah. what you would class as training it wasn't the traditional sort where um, you know you're kind of listening or being presented to and you might have an activity um, it involved the whole room and, and they used the concept of laughter yeah. makes you remember okay. yeah. um, but again I think it goes to show that you need to widen your horizons when you think about learning um, so if there's if there's a platform that delivers yeah. um it might be more useful because your business might have not thought of different courses or ways to deliver um yeah. that would actually see a higher return on investment than if you were to do it yourselves and if we're talking about learning content in a, in a learning platform i suppose we what we need to be talking about is how does that software balance those types of experiences right yeah. so one of the things that we know quite well like say people first or some of the platforms that we use for like hr or people management is that i Okay, I can. You should. It should be hybrid, right? It should allow. It should be a digital experience, in regards to how you can manage your learning, how you can track your learning, and how you can track your development. So I want to be. I, you need to be able to go into a platform that goes. Ah, here's all my options because people don't know what they don't know, and yes, you need true. to be able to know what options are available for you to learn from. So you know, one thing that we have, we can go onto our portal and we can go. Here's all your internal training things. These don't cost you anything. They're there. You can book onto them. They're scheduled. You can go and do them. Yeah. Now, some of them are digital. Some of them are in person. Now, those in-person ones, they're brilliant, but it's still in the system. And if I attend it, 
yeah. it feeds back into my profile. So I can then go on my progress report and go, as part of my employment here, I've attended all these sessions and this is what I learned. And actually, how do I take those skills that I've learned in those sessions and how is it fed into maybe that internal recruitment process we talked about later where we go, oh, Andy's skills mapped yeah. based on the system that we use. Even though he intended an in-person event, we've still captured enough data from that to show that he is skilled in a certain way. And I think that's when you need a, that, that's when a learning system to me works yeah. is when it crosses with your HR function Definitely. and it makes sure that it's tracking who you are as a person, how you develop in a company. Yeah, and I think that goes to show that um, there's so many little pockets of mm. key data around the business, yeah. but you need that centralized HR system yeah. that everything feeds into yeah. so that you can let you can basically leverage everything that you have available in yeah. your business. Yeah. Um, but um, it is true, we, we've got a great um, HR system which captures that information. Mm. One thing I've noted as well is um, our internal trainers, they send a feedback form yeah. following the session. So it's not just... Um, you having um the training session but as you can feed back to the to our internal trades and say look this worked really well um maybe next time uh, this sort of activity might work better and yeah. i think that's um where you kind of elevate your business because it's everyone working together for the great for a greater good yeah absolutely. sounds a bit inspirational that doesn't it, it? Doesn't, yeah <laughs> but that's the point right like i think learning is about inspiring people to get them excited about the next opportunities to grow to develop no exactly and an organization yeah. has a responsibility to do that one because they want you to stay in the organization they want you to grow in the organization and they want you to add more and more value um so so yes, it's great that a learning software and a learning platform can do that for someone, but it's in, it's more vital that any engagement with that and your development is fed back into your HR function. So you have a chance of staying. Otherwise, you're going to empower all these people. You're not going to log it. You're not going to recognize any internal opportunities to add extra value in different areas. And you'll lose them with the skills that you've developed and invested in them to somewhere else. Yeah. So it's again, we talk about loads, but it's all about connecting those dots. Definitely. You know, if we recognize that we know we need learning to have really great content, we know we need to record the engagement of that content so that uh, the engagement that feeds opportunities for that quiet hiring we've talked about or that kind of uh, that labor hoarding we've talked about. Yeah. Because if we're in a position now where and we've talked about the last few months where, yeah. OK, purse strings are tight. We might need to let people go. We're, we're thinking of business strategies. I would l I definitely need to have a, uh, a system that would tell me. Of all the workers and the workforce we've got here, what skills have they got? What can we yeah. do? What have they all trained in? What are they engaging with? So I can go, well, the reason we're not performing is because we got, we've got a big skills gap here. And actually, if we do need to re-strategize how to refocus the business, at least I can still see where our skills are so I can understand how best to use my talent and my workforce to pivot the business in a new way. Yeah, it's all the building blocks, isn't it, that yeah. are the foundation to your business, yeah. people. Yeah. Um, but on that point as well, and I think what kind of summarizes what you just said there is the culture. So a successful business really should be encouraging people to learn new skills, to develop with them, and yeah. help the business progress. Yeah. Um, so... That's one thing that um, it, it's almost fine bringing in a learning system, well, um, but you've also got to have the culture there. Yeah. You have to have um, your employees hungry to learn. Um, you want to have managers supporting the learning. Um, and it doesn't matter, I think, if it's driven top down or down up. Bottom up. <laughs> Bottom up, top down. Top down, yeah. there we go. <laughs> um, but it does. I think that that's um, going to be one of the drivers um, to a successful learning mm. journey in, in the business is having the culture there. Um, and like you say, um, no matter what you invest in, um, it should come down to people wanting to um, to use the learning as well and not yeah. just sit through it, but actually integrate it in their, in their roles um, and progress themselves with the business. Yeah. And also, yeah, making sure that actually you're helping employees recognize that if they have a, maybe a skills gap, it's not a problem, it's not a weakness, it's an opportunity for growth and that the, we're here to help drive that. Yeah. Right. Um, and then the final point I just wanted to bring up um, is, and we briefly touched on it, um, but the compliance. Because mm. it's interesting, I speak to a customer um, with about their LMS um, and they were saying that it's highly important for them because they have mandatory um mm training that they have to deliver and if they don't then they could be down um, for legal action someone could take legal action against them yeah. so they say actually um uh, having a learning system or having learning development in the business um where it's mandatory delivering it actually can prevent um or be a blocker um to make sure the business is protected um and so i think it really highlights the importance as well 
um, of having um, yeah. a learning system, it's not an effective just, one. It's shifting um, perceptions, isn't it? Because I think for years they thought, oh, learning development, great. Yeah, we, we'll think about that. Well, no, it's actually an integral part of keeping your business compliant and safe. Exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a core business function that is required. It's not just a nice add-on for an employee experience. It is part and parcel of making sure a business runs effectively. Indeed. Cool. I think we've had a good chat about learning systems. Yeah, I think covered we a have. lot there. We have, have covered a lot there, and that we, yeah, I wasn't expecting to talk so long about it. So apologies no. if I've gone and waffled on. But Me I thought too. I thought it was a really good. I, I think I've learned more about you know we've had a good chat about does it content, how to engage with it, why it makes us compliant, why it's important. So yeah. yeah, if you'd like to learn any more about what we do as an organisation and actually how we encourage learning yeah. and the platforms we use, such as People First, um, do check out our website on MHRGlobal.com. Lovely. I've been Alice. I've been Andy. See you next week. Bye-bye.